What's up guys? As many of you may know, I am a huge fan of weighted carries. The effects they have on the body are unmatched by anything else I've ever tried and if you're able, I think you owe it to yourself to start picking up heavy things and walking around with them. Today begins what will become a mini series going over the different types of carries and the benefits they offer. In today's video, let's start with what I think is often the most overlooked and underappreciated weighted carry, the shoulder carry. I think one of the main reasons you don't see as many people doing the shoulder carry is because by nature, the movement requires a bigger time investment. A bear hug carry is easy and comes naturally to pretty much everyone. Simply pick something up, hold it to your chest and start walking. But the shoulder carry requires a bit of skill right from the start. If you want to perform a shoulder carry, you first need to get whatever it is you're trying to walk around with onto your shoulder and that takes practice. That said, if you are willing to spend a bit of time learning the movement, the rewards are well worth it. So what can the shoulder carry do for you? I've broken this down into three main areas of interest. Muscle building, basic functionality, and general carryover to strength elsewhere. While I do sincerely believe that all of these are inherently intertwined and build upon each other, let's start with everyone's favorite topic, muscle. When viewed from an outside perspective, it can be difficult to see how a shoulder carry could build any muscle. There doesn't seem to be any concentric or eccentric movement under load, and it's easy to assume that whatever you're carrying is simply resting on your supportive structures and that your muscles are largely passive during the movement. I assure you though, looks are deceiving here. Starting with the basic truth. Carrying something heavy on your shoulder is nothing like wearing a backpack or anything else designed to rest comfortably on your back. Whatever object you decide to carry on your shoulder will be fighting you every step of the way. Rather than allowing for muscle passivity, the heavy weight creates a cascading effect that travels from your shoulders all the way down to your feet, which requires most of the muscle in your body to actively work at stabilizing the load. Before I get into the specific muscle groups the shoulder carry specializes in building, let me give you a few examples explaining why this works. First, there's the basic example of stabilization. Stabilizer muscles in your body may be small, but they do get bigger and stronger by stabilizing weight. Though the role these muscles play may be different than that of some of your bigger prime mover muscles, at the heart of things, we're still talking about skeletal muscle. This is all still the same stuff. Perhaps the fiber types may be different, but if stabilizers can grow by stabilizing, why not the prime movers? Next, let's talk about partials. Remember that range of motion is largely arbitrary. The deadlift is a great example here, and I do credit Alex Leonidas for first bringing this to my attention. The deadlift is generally considered full range of motion when using 45 pound plates, but why? Not because this is the max possible range of motion you can do, but because this height ensures that the bar won't decapitate you if it falls on your neck. We know that a deadlift builds muscle, just like we know that a rack pull at the knee builds muscle. If this is the case, who is to say how much range of motion is necessary for hypertrophy? If a six inch rack pull deadlift builds muscle, then why not the inch or half an inch of continuous movement under load required to stabilize an object resting on your shoulder? And finally, there's the idea of prolonged muscle contraction leading to more muscle growth. Many bodybuilders hold a weight in the contracted position for a few seconds on every rep. They may, for example, hold the bar at their chest for three seconds when the muscles are fully contracted during a lap pull down. Why do they do this? For fun? No. They do this because it increases the time under tension when the muscles are fully engaged, which leads to more growth. If this concept works on a lat pull down, why not with a shoulder carry? Now that I have hopefully cleared up any doubts that you might have had, which muscle groups will the shoulder carry build? Well, while the movement does work most of your body, the three main areas I've noticed the most when doing the shoulder carry are the side and rear delts, the lats, and the mid-back, as in your lower traps, your rhomboids, and the spinal erectors in this part of your back. If you look at the movement from the top down, your arm is basically in the position you'd be in to flex your bicep. Your side and rear delts are very engaged when you do this. You can try this yourself right now if you want. Raise your arm for a bicep pose, but 
Focus on flexing your upper back and shoulder rather than your bicep. You should feel your delts contract to their limit. And this is the position you'll be in during the entire movement. Imagine getting into that flexed arm position where your delts are maximally contracted while holding on to a heavy weight. Now think about walking around and with every step you take, that weight shifts just a little bit, which forces your delts to contract and disengage over and over from many different angles. What this really amounts to is possibly hundreds of little micro adjustments within the span of a single carry. It's no wonder that doing this will build up your shoulders. Next up, there's the lats. The contraction you get in your lats from this movement is unlike anything else I've ever done. It feels like the muscle is gonna burst. It's flexing so hard just to support that weight. I'd wager a guess you'd have a tough time replicating this sensation with even the most specialized cable machine. There's something special about the way the lats work here, and with time, you should see some nice growth. And finally, we have the mid-back. In my opinion, this is the main focus of the movement in terms of muscle growth. When performing a shoulder carry, the weight is constantly trying to pull you to the side. It will also be almost impossible to remain completely upright when carrying anything heavy, so you will be bent slightly at all times, which engages the mid-back in a unique way. All of the muscle in your mid-back will be fighting a never-ending battle to prevent collapsing to the side, which, again, requires hundreds of micro-adjustments and will add size to this part of your body. This will probably be the area that fails you first when you initially start doing the shoulder carry, but you will be surprised by how quickly your muscles adapt. I realize now that I have spent a lot of time talking about building muscle with the shoulder carry, but that's not really the main point of the movement. I just wanted to explain myself to hopefully prove a point that while there are of course many different methods you could use to build up your delts and your lats and your mid-back, uh, many different methods that are probably faster and easier, that doesn't mean that the shoulder carry isn't still a viable method. It's kind of popular right now in the bodybuilding community to look down upon any exercise that has uh, even the smallest hint of something resembling more than just pure muscle building potential. If this exercise doesn't get you from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time possible, if this exercise builds muscle indirectly, then it's frowned upon, and I think that's a shame. So with all that said, now let's move on to basic functionality. As with any type of heavy weighted carry, the shoulder carry makes you feel stable on your feet. In my opinion, there isn't much more functional than having that confidence in your step, having the knowledge that unbalancing you will prove incredibly difficult for anyone who might try. By fighting that sideways pull, you'll also be developing the muscle needed to maintain an upright posture, which will help in any situation. Resisting this pull to the side, which I like to call anti-lateral flexion, is also something unique to the shoulder carry. The one-arm farmer's walk or suitcase carry will build this too, but not in the same way the shoulder carry will. This is a fundamental human ability that often goes untrained in a typical gym setting. There is also the real-world application here. If you've ever had to move lumber by hand, for example, you'll know that the shoulder carry is often your best bet. You'll have much greater endurance and longevity this way because, though your muscles are heavily involved, your skeleton is still taking a lot of that load. Of course, when I had this job, switching between the shoulder carry and more of a searcher position seemed to work best, but this just goes to show that the more options you have available for moving heavy weight, the more evenly distributed across your body the burden will be, and the longer you can go without wearing out. Moving on, let's discuss the topic of general carryover to strength elsewhere. Up until this point, I haven't mentioned one of the main areas of your body that gets worked when doing a shoulder carry, the core. Core stability, that is the strength of your midsection to remain stable when supporting heavy weight, is often the main determining factor in how strong you'll be. The core connects the upper and lower halves of your body and doesn't contain any strong bone to provide extra support. This means that for max force transfer, the core muscles must be incredibly strong and they need to be strong from every angle. The shoulder carry develops this strength directly. Picture a deadlift or a squat. Most people fail to lift a weight because their core isn't strong enough and they fold in half. You may think that becoming better at remaining stable when being pulled to the side doesn't apply here because 
A squat or deadlift only involves bending forward, not sideways, but you'd be mistaken. The stronger your midsection gets in 360 degrees, the more stable it will become, period. The shoulder carry has direct carryover to any heavy free-weighted movement, and you should notice that you feel much more stable in general after only a few sessions. Now, in terms of how to add the shoulder carry into your program, you'll want to start slow. It's very easy to overdo this one, especially at first. You'll be strengthening something that may be completely untrained, so a little will go a long way. Just as a single set of five on the deadlift once or twice a week when you first began lifting was enough for max adaptation, a few sets here will be enough. Start light and work on increasing volume at first. Two sets of 30 steps per side done once a week is a good place to start. Over a month or two, slowly work up to three sets of 50 steps per side once a week with the same weight you started with. From here, you can start adding weight every week and increase the frequency to twice a week if you'd like, though once a week is probably enough. And at first, I would do these at the end of your workout. As for choosing an object to walk around with, anything will do, but I find a sandbag is the most forgiving, particularly if it has a bit of space left in it. This will let you get more out of less weight because the sand likes to move around on you, which increases the difficulty while also being less harsh on the skin when you're first starting out. And finally, I want to talk about the sport-specific strength you gain from the shoulder carry. I saved this for last because I realize that many of you aren't as interested in natural stone lifting as I am, but I couldn't make a video on the shoulder carry without bringing this up. I first started lifting what I call the antler stone almost six months ago, and it's far heavier than anything else I've ever thrown onto my shoulder. At first, I had a hard enough time just getting it to chest height. The idea of shouldering the thing seemed like a far off dream, and in a way, it was. It was a few months after I found it that I first started working towards shouldering the antler stone, and I was pretty much stuck in the same place from the start. I'd get the stone three quarters of the way up my chest and I'd collapse sideways and fail the attempt. It was around this time I also began cutting weight. I ended up dropping a little over 15 pounds and to my surprise, I hadn't seemed to lose much if any strength when it came to stone lifting. I still couldn't shoulder the antler stone though. I would still get stuck at that same spot. Well, as luck would have it, though I didn't consider it luck at the time, the weather outside got pretty bad and I didn't have access to stones at all for almost two months. This meant I started spending a lot more time inside lifting my sandbag. It was here I started to get serious about the shoulder carry. I had worked with the movement a bit in the past, but never with much weight and I never pushed it too hard. It was always done as more of an afterthought at the end of my training day, never as a main focus. Well. One day, mostly just because I wanted to try something new, I tried the shoulder carry with my sandbag for the first time, and I instantly knew I was onto something. Loading this movement up heavy feels completely different than when using light weight. I got kind of hooked on the movement for a while, and the work paid off. A few days ago, the ground was dry, and I decided to give shouldering the antler stone another go. I warmed up as usual, and on my first attempt, I shouldered the stone. Of course, there are many factors that contributed to me getting stronger here, but besides the shoulder carry, I didn't change much in my training. I know from experience that the explosive barbell movements and the general sandbag to shoulder work did help, but I've always done that stuff. Somehow, I was able to get considerably stronger in a few months while weighing 15 pounds less and all signs point to the heavy shoulder carry. I think the main weakness I had when trying to shoulder the antler stone was strength endurance near the top position. Like I said, I'd get three quarters of the way up and fail the lift because I'd fall to the side. The heavy shoulder carry seems to strengthen this weakness directly. It only makes sense that spending more time in that position would lead to more strength in that part of the lift. So I think I've said pretty much all I have to say about the shoulder carry at this point. Hopefully you guys got something from this video. Let me know if you decide to give it a try or if there's any other type of video you want me to make talking about this stuff because like I've said before, uh, I just find this stuff fun. So I hope you like the video and until next time, thanks for watching.